स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया national program on technology enhanced learning a joint venture by the indian institutes of technology and the indian institute of science we are at the beginning of a series of lectures on cultural studies and i welcome you to join me in this journey of knowing understanding ourselves through cultural studies in this first lecture we shall be talking about several things i shall be uh, telling you what methodology i shall be following when i shall be deliver delivering these uh, 40 lectures right but before that let us begin to talk about cultural studies let us begin to unpack some of the things that we are going to do some of the things that are going to be with us in these 40 lectures well let me begin with one of my favorite uh, quotations from the greek philosopher socrates socrates said that the unexamined life is not worth living and whenever i teach this course at iit guwahati uh, i begin with this quotation from socrates right we live lives and when we do not examine the kind of lives that we are living then it is as per socrates's um observation it is a life that is certainly not worth living it is a life that is lived um in a way in which you know we are unaware of many of our decisions many of our actions at least why we take certain decisions and why we hold certain things valuable etc okay i would like to pose a question okay to you and it goes like this have you ever asked yourselves why do we live the kind of life that we live okay this is a question that has enormous um in implications in almost importance uh, for us this in a way is why you know is answering the question why we do cultural studies at all okay why do we live the kind of lives that we live now you know there are ways of asking this question okay so the way that i have put it why do we live the kind of life that we live to which cultural studies gives us answers that is not quite the way in which we are to pose questions okay when we do cultural studies right so if you look at this slide then we should say that in cultural studies this question may be framed as how are we produced as subjects right so from this slide we come to know that we are not to use a word like person okay when we talk about individuals about human beings the word that we are to use here is subject okay subject subjectivity subject positions these are important parts uh, words in the terminology of um, cultural studies okay so uh, well with the with this uh, these preliminaries let me go on to introduce the course to you and first we shall be talking about pedagogy right so what is pedagogy pedagogy as you know refers to the science and art of teaching okay so when we say we are going to declare our pedagogy here what we are doing is uh, well i am expected to tell you how we are going to go about this course how i am going to go about teaching this course right so the first thing that is to be 
uh, noted, okay, particularly in cultural studies, is that you know um, there may be um, you know a great deal of flexibility is allowed, okay, in uh, both syllabus and in teaching style of cultural studies, and and uh, eventually we'll begin to understand why cultural studies is flexible, right? Suffice it for us now to simply say that cultural studies, you know, you may have. It is said that there may be uh, as many ways of devising a syllabus in cultural studies, right, as um, there may be teachers or instructors for cultural studies. Okay, uh, why there may be so much of flexibility, okay, uh, is something that we'll come to realize when we when we talk about the sheer interdisciplinarity of cultural studies right so what have we found till now that cultural studies pedagogically allows uh, and sometimes it encourages a lot of flexibility in syllabus designing and in the style of teaching second you know a variety of topics come into cultural studies okay uh, if we understand and we shall see in a while that culture is about everyday life okay culture is not uh, in the way many people understand culture you know to be uh, say uh, you know music or theater or you know high culture as or the great literary texts etc okay a variety of topics may come in while we build a syllabus okay um, on cultural studies ranging from uh, rituals right to um, you know uh, to ideas to intellectual products to mass media uh, and so on right so these are the two points that we found that is flexibility both in style and teaching and also flexibility in choosing and you know when choosing topics particularly when there are a variety of topics to choose from fine next a bit about how i am going to use okay uh, use source material for this course this is an important point and i need to declare right away that i shall be uh, referring to several texts right uh, in these 40 lectures uh, some will would be seminal and would uh, to, you know, to the course and would crop up um, you know from course to course others may turn up only in you know may be featured in only one um, one lecture okay and other and some others a few others would be there in the background as uh, you know reference material right so for every lecture there would be key source texts these key source texts would be declared in a slide okay in the beginning of the lecture and uh, um, cultural studies or usually in the humanities what happens is the formulations right the articulations made by critics by scholars are important and those of you who are in the humanities okay would understand how you know the the way the words have been put okay uh, the language in which the terms that have been used by scholars uh, are are immensely important for us and that is why what I am going to do is in every lecture I am going to uh, bring in extracts okay from the texts that I shall declare okay okay to be the source text in this lecture right and I shall be for instance let me give you an example here right uh, this slide is one such example for instance here i am bringing an extract from douglas m kellner and minakshi gigi durham's edited volume uh, on media and cultural studies and this uh, is directly from uh, you know uh, their introductory essay and you see the marks on uh, this slide right what i'm going to do is i'm going to first read uh, these uh, extracts out and then uh, as I do in the classroom I shall unpack these lectures and I shall be explaining these, uh, these extracts line by line to you right. So, that is the first matter as far as references are concerned that is we are going to have uh, you know key source text declared at the beginning of every lecture ok and then uh, we are we shall be using extracts and um, uh, you know uh, you know 
I shall be mentioning the names of the writers and I shall be also uh, declaring whenever I am quoting from them, I shall be declaring that I, these are actually not my words, these are extracts taken from certain scholars. Right. So, fine. So, the, what are the key source texts in this lecture, in the first lecture? These are Chris Barker's Cultural Studies, Theory and Practice, Barker's The Sage Dictionary of Cultural Studies, John Story's edited volume, What is Cultural Studies, a Reader? The Polity Reader in Cultural Studies, published by Polity, John, uh, sorry, Tony Bennett and John Crow's edited volume, The Sage Handbook of Cultural St Analysis, Promote K. Nair's An Introduction to Cultural Studies and Clifford Gates's The Interpretation of Cultures. Now, obviously, all, uh, all these books, all these titles do not feature um, you know, uh, equally in this lecture and all lectures you will find that you know, uh, sometimes only one quotation, a short quotation is taken from a book. But if I were to point to one book that you may use as a text okay, in, in, you know, in a course on cultural studies, an introductory course on cultural studies, then it would be this first book, okay? Chris Barker's Cultural Studies, Theory and Practice. right? I should also tell you in you know uh, before going into uh, you know the, the the main part of this lecture that these lectures are introductory as far as their level is concerned. These lectures are as you know being recorded under the aegis of NPTEL, the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning, and um, the students at undergraduate levels okay, in the IITs and in the various engineering colleges form the target audience of these lectures. Right? But we also hope that students at higher levels, for instance, students, students in the MA level or students who are just beginning their PhD you know, to, start to work for, towards their PhD um, and those, uh, uh, those students who are also interested in cultural studies. Okay, it is hoped that they would also benefit from these lectures. However, it is wise to remind ourselves that these lectures are, uh, you know, um, being designed and these lectures are being delivered, keeping in mind the undergraduate uh, students at engineering colleges. Okay, second, um, you know, it is not possible for us to deal with all aspects of topics within uh, you know the limits of a single lecture okay those of you who are interested or begin to uh, have an interest in cultural studies should look at some of the books that are being mentioned in the references right okay so with all you know all these caveats let's begin uh, our um, discussion on cultural studies well so I shall begin with a quotation from Chris Barker's The Sage Dictionary of Cultural Studies. The domain of cultural studies can be understood as an interdisciplinary or post-disciplinary field of inquiry that explores the production and inculcation of culture or maps of meaning. However, cultural studies has no referent to which we can point rather it is constituted by the language game of cultural studies. That is the theoretical terms developed and deployed by persons calling their work cultural studies constitutes that which is cultural studies. Now, let us unpack this extract from Chris Barker. What is the first thing that Barker says? Barker says that cultural studies is an interdisciplinary field. And Rightly so, cultural studies is a field which is, you know, in perhaps the most, it would not be wrong to say that it is the most important uh, field as far as interdisciplinarity is concerned. Okay, uh, it has many kindred fields that I am going to talk about in a while, okay. But the first characteristic of cultural studies as a domain, as a subject of study, as a discipline is that it is by nature. Uh, interdisciplinary and some also call it post-disciplinary in the sense that you know there is a willing um, uh, 
uh, willing blurring of boundaries, okay, where you know one is not only interdisciplinary that is one is not borrowing from you know different domains, but one has crossed the need okay, to be uh, a discipline and also you know to be disciplined as it were okay, as a domain of study. Right. The second point that is made by uh, Chris Barker is uh, that uh, cultural studies really if you say what is cultural studies and there he says that there is no referent, okay, there is nothing to refer to okay, to say that this is cultural studies. Right. He says that cultural studies is constituted by several ways of speaking. This is very important for us and I uh, want you to listen to this carefully. Okay. Cultural studies is constituted by what he calls language games. Right. These are different ways of talking and we shall see in a while what is meant by different ways of talking, different ways of articulating, okay, uh, articulating points regarding uh, socio-cultural issues. So, he says it is constituted by the language game of cultural studies and mainly okay, it is constituted by the theoretical terms, right? theoretical terms developed and deployed by scholars who call their work cultural studies. Right? This is what cultural studies is about. Well, of course, this um, first sort of exploration into cultural studies, uh, you may not be uh, you, 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 may not, you may not be able to understand exactly what it is, but this entire lecture and the next lecture, you know, these two lectures are devoted to understanding cultural studies. Next, Barker says cultural studies can also be grasped as a discursive formation, right. You will come across the term discursive formation um, a number of times in our lectures, okay, and we need to know at this juncture what a discursive formation is. So, discursive formation is a group of ideas, images and practices that provide ways of talking about and conduct associated with a particular topic, social activity or institutional site. Okay. So, discursive formation basically is something that forms around, right, forms around certain ideas and images and practices that come together okay, to throw light on. Uh, as he says, uh, any topic, social activity or institutional site. Right? I can give you an example. For instance, the discourse of science, right? when we say call science a discursive formation, uh, then we understand that there are certain you know, ideas, formative ideas, okay? there are certain images and practices inherent in science as an activity and science as a language, right? which throws light on uh, you know throws light on different aspects of um, the physical universe okay on different topics on different activities and institutional sites okay now when you talk about a different discourse like religion for instance religion too is then a discursive formation right it is also, it also has its constituent ideas, it has its images and practices and it also talks about the universe, it also talks about man, but in very different ways. So, you see cultural studies is then itself also a domain in the sense that it is a discursive formation, which has its own foundational ideas, its own terminology, its own way of speaking or ways of speaking, its own images and practices. Right? Now, what comprises these images, uh, these ideas, this terminology, these concepts is what would form mostly okay, uh, the subject matter of this video course on cultural studies. Then Barker says that, that is cultural studies is constituted by a regulated way of speaking about objects. Now, you may have a discursive formation, but one of the you know one of the most important aspects of discursive formations is that any discourse is a way of talking about something all right, okay, but it is a regulated way of talking about something. That is, there are certain rules, regulations and norms 
okay, within a discourse, within the limits of a discourse, within the framework of a discourse that you cannot cross or you cannot break. Okay. So, therefore, cultural studies is constituted as Barker says by a regulated way of speaking about objects. right? And then please look at this slide. And cultural studies coheres around key concepts, uh, sorry, ideas and concerns that include articulation, culture, discourse, ideology, identity, popular culture, power, representation and text. These are some of the fundamental okay, uh, fundamental uh, concepts in cultural studies and these are the ideas that you know uh, ideas that go on to build the discursive formation called cultural studies. Then I would like to draw your attention to an essay entitled what is cultural studies anyway and this essay is by Richard Johnson. Here Johnson says that the text is no longer in cultural studies studied for its own sake for nor even for the social effects it may be thought to produce, but rather for the subjective or cultural forms which it realizes and makes, uh, makes available. We believe in cultural studies that culture, everything about culture is constructed. Okay? Culture is the result of subjective forms, right? Now, by subjective forms, I do not mean only simply feelings, but by subjective, uh, we mean that these cultural forms, practices, artifacts are produced okay, by certain conditions, are produced by certain social conditions, by certain historical conditions and by actual people with their own you know historical and personal narratives right so in that sense it is to show how what produces how meaning is produced for instance right so objectivity is something that really doesn't find a place in cultural studies so much so that when we look at our you know lecture on um, science technology and cultural studies in the fourth module you will find that even science in the, the idea of pure objectivity in science is contested by cultural studies. So, what is you know uh, how did cultural studies come about and we should know that cultural studies is a relatively new area of study okay? and it has its um, you know uh, precursor domains uh, so to speak, okay? sociology being one, but before that we should look at what you know one of the most important practitioners and theorists of cultural studies to what Hall has to say about the history of cultural studies. Stuart Hall in his essay, Cultural Studies Two Paradigms uh, talks about three persons, okay, three, three very important scholars okay, whose work, works were um, sort of the, whose works were instrumental in giving birth so to speak to the domain or discipline cultural studies and they are Raymond Williams and particularly his book Culture and Society, Richard Hogart his work Uses of Literacy and E. P. Thompson's um, Making of the English Working Class. Now why these books are important okay, uh, is that they form a break from previous ways of theorizing right essentially this break right uh, is characterized by three things okay these are a please look at this slide these are culturalism materialism and a marxist approach to things now you could you know use one term for all of these and that is that term is materialism in the sense that the you know all are cultural practices, all our ideas, okay, all our institutions are the result of a materialist, uh, you know, um, are the result of matter really. How matter in the sense that it is from actual practices, it is from the material world, okay, um, it is from these that culture emerges, right that even ideas emerge and in our lecture on Marxism, we are going to understand it 
better. Suffice it for us to say here that the works of uh, you know Hogarth, um, Williams and E. P. Thompson right, they constitute or give a new push to the humanities and social sciences in that they bring in uh, these you know uh, these orientations which are called culturalism, materialism and Marxism. Okay. So, obviously when we begin to talk about cultural studies, the first question that should come to our mind is what is culture? We all of us have an idea of what culture is, but that uh, you know those ideas of culture need not be the way in which culture is understood in the domain cultural studies. In cultural studies, okay, we consider culture to be ordinary, right? We do not make a distinction between high culture and low culture. Culture is everyday practices of people, right? Culture is ordinary. Culture is also defined, and this comes from Raymond Williams, as a way of life. Culture is also understood further as democratized, right? And finally, culture is understood as something that gives us meaning, okay, or something where meaning is generated, where significance is generated, right? So, what are the ways in which culture is seen in, you know, um, in the discipline culture studies? A, that culture is ordinary, it's, it's, it's to do with ordinary everyday practices of human beings. Culture is a way of life culture is democratized and culture is to do with meaning creation or meaning generation. All this would be clear as we look at you know these separately in our lectures. Therefore, it is not that you know you simply look uh, you simply study culture right uh, or that you study cultural practices in isolation. One of the goals of cultural studies is to look at the ideas okay, that human beings have produced, which give rise to cultural practices, which are behind you know the you know which are the foundation of cultural uh, practices. And uh, secondly, we are going to also look at the patterns that these practices show. Right. So we find that both ideas and practice practices in different times in different spaces begin to uh, you know begin to show certain patterns and these patterns are what is uh, you know targeted by cultural studies and we are supposed to find these patterns in our you know everyday practices and in our cultural forms. Now, what is you know how, how do we characterize cultural studies as a methodology? I had already said a while ago that cultural studies does not believe in pure objectivity. Okay. Cultural studies rather would look at the subjective elements in cultural formations, be these individual subjectivity or a collective subjectivity. Right? So, uh, if we look at this slide, we find that cultural studies is basically anti-positivist um, in its orientation. Now, what do we mean by anti-positivist? Anti-positivism is uh, philosophy you could say that considers all knowledge as uncertain right as characterized by uncertainty by provisionality it sees every way of speaking as a discourse with its own regulations with its own norms and it is in a, and its own um, epi uh, sorry and its own epistemology and it uh, considers indeterminacy okay to be a crucial part of all knowledge and finally, it believes that phenomena whether they are cultural or scientific okay, are always over determined. Right? Over determined or over determination means that um, however much we may try and even succeed okay, in, um, in uh, finding out the causes of events over determination would say that there's, there would always be causes that we cannot um, identify given our cognitive and our technological limitations. Okay. It means uh, the theory of over determination therefore, means that phenomena are over determined that is that determined by causes over and above those that we can identify right so uncertainty provisionality discourse indeterminacy and over determination 
these are aspects of uh, you know a, a branch of philosophy that is called epistemology. Okay. Epistemology is a branch of philosophy that um, studies you know which is also known as a theory of knowledge. It studies the origin scope and the limits of knowledge. The limits of knowledge in the sense uh, of how, you know under what conditions okay, is knowledge at all possible. Right? So, epistemologically speaking then anti positivism would um, you know accept the fact that knowledge is created all right, okay, that knowledge uh, has its origins, but knowledge also has its limiting conditions. right? So, under those limiting conditions, we eventually should arrive at a proposition like this, that all knowledge is always provisional, because by or you know since for you know by its inception or by the conditions of its inception, it is already limited. Okay? So, this is what cultural studies believes in that all knowledge is provisional and all, all knowledge uh, may work, but at the same time it is uh, you know prone to change. So, let me introduce the four modules in um, this video course and let me and you know the various lectures that comprise these modules. The first module is introductory by nature and Lecture 1 is entitled um, Cultural Studies and Introduction. The second, in the second lecture, we continue our deliberations on um, cultural studies and we uh, call it, entitle it Understanding Cultural Studies. The third lecture uh, is the beginning of a, you know, of a cluster of lectures really, where we, you know, we begin to talk about what science has to tell us about our origins. Uh, because culture is not, you know, contrary to what many might think, culture is not uh, a recent phenomenon. Okay, even prehistoric man had culture, right? And we shall see in these, um, you know, three or four lectures on the scientific view of culture, right? We shall see how, um, you know evolution has given us certain propensities okay, and finally, given rise to the mind that creates modern culture. Okay. So, lecture 3 is um, on evolution and culture, lecture 4 in module 1 is entitled evolutionary psychology in which we look at the principles of evolutionary psychology, lecture 5 the modern mind and its origins. The sixth lecture is entitled memetics. The seventh lecture, from the seventh lecture, we have another cluster of lectures really, which um, are to do with theories in cultural studies. We would not have time to look at all theories and so, we shall be looking at three, the three most important theories if I may say and these are structuralism, which is um, you know the seventh lecture. Uh, lectures 8 and 9 are devoted to Marxism and the tenth lecture in module 1 is devoted to post structuralism. So, we will find that you know the first module um, introduces cultural studies, okay, talks about its scope in the first two lectures and followed by you know lectures that are devoted to the science to what science has to say about culture and then we have lectures that are devoted four lectures devoted to theories in cultural studies. In the second module you will find that all the lectures are devoted to key concepts. I found a while ago that cultural studies is constituted okay, by certain terms, without these terms, without these key concepts, right? Um, we would fail to make any you know um, sophisticated uh, articulations or formulations on culture, right? These are the constitutive. Uh, these are the rep these form the repertoire of the terminology of cultural studies. Therefore, module two, which is devoted uh, to cultural studies, begins with one of the most important concepts, which is subjectivity. And I we had uh, we had just touched upon subjectivity a while ago. 
more about it in the lecture on subjectivity. Then the next lecture is devoted to identity. Lectures 3 and 4 are devoted to another important term ideology. Lectures 5 and 6 are uh, these lectures talk about representation. The seventh lecture in the second module is devoted to power. Module uh, sorry, uh, lecture 8 is on discourse and lectures 9 and 10 are on gender. Now, even uh, obviously feminism is an important part of cultural studies, but uh, when I am talking about gender, okay, I hope to bring uh, that in, so that I am so not you know devoting a lecture separately to uh, feminism. Now, in uh, the third module, we include certain terms like body, space, etcetera. These are also theoretical terms, but I am bringing them under another rubric that is sites of cultural studies okay, in a bid to uh, in, a, in a bid to discuss these, uh, these terms and topics. Uh, as you know, uh, with a view to understanding where culture happens, right? Where cultural practices happen. We understood culture um, by now. The definition we have is of culture is a something ordinary uh, culture, as uh, you know, having to do our, with our everyday practices, right? Culture as democratized and as meaning formation and meaning creation. Somewhere where meaning is created and formed right so if meaning is created and formed is culture is if culture is ordinary if it is to do with everyday practices then where does it happen right so uh, keeping that in view the lectures in this module are one the body then space time development language ethnicity race and nation globalization consumption and biology Module 4 is the last module and it is devoted to cultural industries and cultural forms. We begin by talking about cultural industry and then we move on to talking uh, to talk about uh, the basic unit okay, of cultural forms which is the commodity. This, is, this lecture is followed by the third lecture entitled media. The fourth lecture is devoted to television. Lecture 5 is entitled new media. And uh, the sixth lecture is on science, technology and culture. Lecture 7 talks about cyber culture on, on virtual reality. Lecture 8 is on cultural policy and um, the ninth lecture is you know is devoted to a critique uh, of cultural studies you know. Um, if cultural studies you will understand uh, as you as you move on with my, you know our lectures that cultural studies uh, one of the most important functions of cultural studies is to critique, right? Is to scrut uh, scrutinize, so to speak, our cultural forms and practices. And by that token, cultural studies itself must be self-reflexive enough to critique itself, right? So we shall be looking at the critique of cultural studies as given to us by many scholars, and in the end, we shall be also defending the domain of cultural studies. The last lecture in this course is. Um, you know, a summing up okay, of all that, you know, brief summing up of all that we have done in all that we are going to look at right in these um, series of lectures. Okay. So, well, now let us go back to the point that um, first point that um, Chris Barker had given us, and that is the interdisciplinary um, mode. Okay, or orientation of cultural studies. So, in that case, what are the disciplines, right, from which cultural studies um, borrows? So, the four main disciplines, and this is not, you know, obviously an exhaustive list. There are several other disciplines that are increasingly, you know, um, increasingly uh, playing a part in the interdisciplinary enterprise of cultural studies. However, we may point to four core um, areas really, and these are anthropology sociology, literary theory and political economy, particularly Marxism. So, about the interdisciplinary scope of cultural studies and if we really um, you know extend it, we can begin by asking ourselves this question right. In how many different ways 
okay can you study yourself as a cultural being you are we are beings in culture we are all particles of culture we have our everyday practices okay uh, then in how many different ways can you uh, study yourself as a cultural being i'm asking or this i'm posing this question to you in a bit to show you that there are many domains um, and uh, you know many disciplines from which we can answer these questions and that is why cultural studies is inter and has to be interdisciplinary in nature now let's look at sociology now from sociology when you talk about culture you can ask questions like these why do we have the social systems and arrangements that we do okay in, from psychology we can ask questions like why do we think in certain ways what does it mean to be a cognitive agent okay we can talk about evolution brain systems cognition the self other dichotomy self esteem right these are all if you realize part and parcel of what what it means for us to be cultural beings to be beings living in society to be beings that um, engage in cultural practices then science and technology for instance we can ask a question like how does technology affect our way of life now we saw that a way of life is nothing but culture right so how does technology affect our culture and here um, let me bring a quotation from winston churchill okay he says it so beautifully we design our buildings and then our buildings design us okay this precisely is what is meant by technology affecting our way of life right we design our buildings and then our buildings design us next literature and media like literature particularly liter literary theory is very closely related to cultural studies in that many do not even want to make a different uh, differentiation or distinction between um, literary studies and cultural studies or literary theory and cultural uh, theory however from literature and media we may ask questions like why are the media and literature so powerful as cultural products are we constructed by the media if so how far then history how has culture involved uh, evolved and changed through different times that is here by culture obviously mean how have our ways of living evolved and changed to different type uh, different times and how should we look at history how should we study history then philosophy is also another domain that is very important from culture uh, for cultural studies particularly i would say epistemology in philosophy we find questions like which are important for cultural studies questions like how do we attribute meaning to our existence through our value and belief systems then language from language we have questions like how does language construct culture and can culture be read as a language we have uh, indeed a um, whole lecture in this you uh, know third module that is devoted to language and more about it in that lecture and economics how does wealth and its distribution determine our way of life this is taken up by uh, you know the two lectures or in the two lectures on marxism so you see that there are several domains that you know from which we can borrow or uh, you know uh, we can borrow certain formulations from which we can you know pose certain questions and also look for answers now if you recall cultural studies has no referent really as um, barker had said cultural studies is all about talking in a certain way and so when we it's all about language games as it were and when we begin to talk in certain ways we need the help or we need need to Uh, you know be interdisciplinary because the questions and their answers cannot come only from language games okay we need certain areas from which these formulations would have to be made right so the key concepts and that are you know and uh, which are the guiding statements for our course okay are those that have been articulated again by chris barker in cultural studies that is you know culture is not a given right that said a while ago culture is always constructed culture is never natural right it is constructed by human beings meanings are generated and constructed by us so culture is not a given it is constructed and hence can be studied systematically then the second point made by barker is that culture is not absolute or static but changing and dynamic 
followed by this statement there are reasons and forces example political economy behind cultural changes and power is the chief arbiter of the kind of lives that we li live okay so as i said there are many ways in which you can uh, talk about cultural studies many ways in which the syllabus uh, can be devised but for our um, you know for our course it is important for us to you know delimit the area of, uh, you know within which we are talking and in this sense chris barker's formulations on culture and cultural studies are important for us we need to make you know a very important differentiation or distinction at this juncture between cultural studies and the study of culture right many would say this is a distinction between cultural studies right and anthropology now in cultural studies is very important to remember that even though we do not um, uh, even even though we we talk about cultural practices okay even though our data are you know the actual practices that we do right that is uh, not all about cultural studies right vis-a-vis -vis the study of culture we talk about the cultural practices and forms importantly in terms of they being symbolic forms and they being signifying practices these are uh, forms that are symbolic in nature these are forms that are that signify something now symbol the symbolic aspect of cultural studies and the signifying practices aspect would be talked about in our lectures on structuralism and post structuralism suffice it at this juncture to for us to simply understand that cultural studies is not exactly the study of culture in the sense cultural artifacts and forms are our target all right but we talk about you know how meaning is formed through symbolic forms and signifying practices right and how they you know uh, how they affect or how they impact our subjectivity or even create our subjectivity and our identities okay so if uh, we are asked where when cultural studies as a discipline actually began okay we said a while ago that cultural studies as a discipline is a relatively new discipline right and that there were uh, you know sort of precursor disciplines um, which gave rise to this interdisciplinary enterprise for instance we saw anthropology sociology um, and um, literature and language okay but we can in fact point to a specific date okay as far as cultural studies or rather the birth of cultural studies is concerned and this is you know the establishment of the center for contemporary cultural studies in 1964 at the university of birmingham right and its uh, first director was richard hogarth and followed by uh, you know um, suot hall so richard hogarth and stuart hall are in, you know the two most important persons they both of them were directors of the center for contemporary cultural studies and as we saw a while ago uh, richard hogarth along with raymond williams and e p thompson uh, you know uh, you know they constitute a break in previous uh, ways of thinking and orientations of thinking in the sense that uh, it was a materialist understanding of ourselves as cultural beings as social beings okay that was the chief orientation and the chief methodology contemporary cultural studies however is slightly different it has taken on different hues and colors right in that there are three important um, you know orientations or three important um you know three important ways in which we talk about culture today and these are the semiological that is to do with science to uh, second is the importance of power and politics in our cultural lives and third policy or you know policy making or decisions regarding the dis production distribution and consumption of cultural products so contemporary cultural studies does not really do away with the materialist approach but there has been a change over the years okay particularly with coming the coming in of post structuralism and there is a we have a lecture separate lecture on post structuralism uh, where we talk about you know 
um, a certain break again with previous ways of thinking. So, semiology, politics and policy, this is what uh, characteri you know, characterizes contemporary cultural studies. So, I would like to end um, by talking about this cultural turn as given to us by Bennett and Frau. And I am quoting from Bennett and Frau, on the one hand there has been a clear shift in the social sciences over the last 20 or so years from a primary focus on social, political and economic structures understood as distinct from and in some sense prior to their cultural embedding to an understanding that the particularities of this embedding, the ways of life, the patterns of everyday interaction, the systems of meaning making are in crucial ways formative of social institutions. So, what we talked just a while ago okay, in the previous slide about this change that has been brought in by the cultural turn is articulated by Bennett and Frau in um, their introductory essay on you know the sage um, handbook of cultural analysis. Further they go on to say this shift in the social sciences has entailed a breaking down of the dichotomy between institutional and symbolic structures and practices, a recognition that economic processes or technological systems or political frameworks or kinship structures are always made up among things, among other things of discourses of beliefs of negotiations among social actors of the indeterminacies of action occurring in time. So, you see that you know um, scholars like Bennett and Frau and many others have sort of identified that yes there is a break from talking only about institutions and economic structures to talking about discourses to talking about uh, you know about negotiations and to talking about as we see in the previous slide the systems of meaning making that is of semiology. You will con come to understand more of this, all this may seem to be um, rather alien to you as uh, perhaps as students of uh, you know of engineering um, and um, sciences and technology, okay, you are not used to this way of, uh, of talking about culture. Many of the things may have been taken um, for us uh, by us for granted, right. So, I hope in then they, you know as the lectures unfold you will be able to understand because we will be able to spend time on so many of the key concepts that have just come up here today it seems out of nowhere okay so slowly as you begin you know as you stay with me and you begin to, we begin to discuss these things and all of these would um, seem and you know, by the end of these lectures um, all of these would be very clear to you so we shall now move on to what we call the discussion. The discussion really um, you know comprises a couple of questions they may, that may be put to you in exams or questions that you may pose to yourselves also okay, to find out how much you have understood. Okay. So, if we ask a question like this delineate the domain of cultural studies then you would say that uh, we may talk about cultural studies and deline delineate its uh, domain through uh, the words of Chris Barker and we may take help from Barker's definitions okay, to, uh, to delineate the domain of cultural studies and we shall say then that cultural studies first is an interdisciplinary field okay, in that it borrows from several kindred domains like anthropology, sociology, literature, language etcetera okay, of political economy and that because of this sheer interdisciplinarity, you know cultural studies itself does not have disciplinary boundaries so much so that no you know many do not want to call it a discipline and hence it is also a post disciplinary one and that cultural studies has no referent really what is cultural studies is you know we are not really referring to anything other than the very language games okay, the way or different ways of talking. Okay, about culture, about cultural practices, about knowledge right and that it is as Barker says constituted by language games and the theoretical terms it is constituted by the theoretical terms that have been um, you know uh, that have been um, constructed okay, in a bid to talk in different ways about culture. Now, the fact uh, the uh, you know the important fact here is uh, we will be talking about this later. Uh, in one of the lectures is that um, the theoretical 
terms help us to talk about things in different ways, in ways that have not been really, um, really used before. And even as we talk about things in different ways, we re-describe and re-signify things. What happens is older habits and patterns of thinking, okay, these subside and we begin to see things in a new way. This itself is a beginning of a political practice where we show, where we, we show you know, uh, the working of pol politics and power in our cultural lives. Then we can also say that cultural studies is a discursive formation and by discursive formation we understand that you know the, it is a formation from made by a group of ideas, images and practices. It is, way, it is a way of talking and, and if you remember we talked about science being a discursive formation, religion being a, discurs a discursive formation that and both have different ideas and different images and practices. right? So, also all other domains are different ways and discursive formations. So, cultural studies is also a regulated way of talking. It is not that you can say anything and everything okay, within cultural studies because it is interdisciplinary. There are also rules, regulations and norms within which you can talk uh, you know, or you can build discourses in cultural studies. And these uh, you know, ways of speaking right they also cohere as barker says around concepts ideas that con, you know and concerns which include words like power identity representation discourse all these are part of you know uh, our lectures on cultural studies then who are considered the progenitors of cultural studies then the answer here is the one given by stuart hall that scholars like Raymond Williams and Richard Hogarth, who are known as, you know, um, uh, who are known as cultural materialists, okay, who talk, you know, who argued from the point of view of materialism, okay, um, and not of idealism or not, uh, you know, from a metaphysical point of view. You know, your matter is paramount. So Raymond Williams, Richard Hogarth, and E. P. Thompson are the scholars who are, you know identified by um, critics like Stuart Hall and others to be the most important uh, precursors, so to speak, of cultural studies as a discipline. Then how is culture defined in cultural studies? Culture is not defined in the sort of common, commonsensical way of culture as referring to cultural products like um, you know, um, like the theater, like dance, music, high forms like classical music, etc. Culture is ordinary. Culture is a way of life in cultural studies. It is understood as democratized and importantly culture is where meaning happens, where meaning and signification are generated. Okay? So, it is in this sense that we have to understand culture uh, in cultural studies and, in, and this is what is going to guide us in our understanding of culture. Well, so we come to the end of the first lecture and yes, I understand so many terms being thrown, thrown around, so many new things being talked about, by, but I uh, really assure you that as we begin to take each of these up one by one in the lectures, these would definitely be easy for you and you would also after these lectures find that we have all, we have grown, cultural studies is an area that allows you to grow. Okay. Why? Because it, it talks about, it is about you, it is about us, it talks about us as cultural beings. Okay. And remember what is the question that we had posed in the beginning? Why do we live the kind of lives that we live? And we had said after Socrates, the Greek philosopher, that the unexamined life is not worth living. So, I invite you to examine uh, life, to examine the kind of lives that we are living and to find out the reasons behind why we live the kind of lives that we live. Thank you so much.